to the metal headed to This is the Warrior Way episode 1 with your host me Coach Fetterman and Coach Norcross. Good evening coach. Good evening. The vision for Wilmington Christian School is to provide a distinctly Christian innovative education that effectively develops godly influencers who are well prepared for life after high school and who impact the culture for Christ. And the mission of our school is to build on the foundation of scriptural truth to teach students to grow in Christian character, excel in academic proficiency, and to foster mentoring relationships. And coaches, we talk about athletics as one of the key ways that we teach students at WCS to grow in their faith and their Christian character. We know that the lessons learned in sports like teamwork, perseverance, overcoming obstacles, these are amazing life lessons that our athletes are exposed to. We know that also athletics are critical to fostering mentor relationships and just through practice and games alone, we know our coaches easily spend 10 to 15 hours per week with our athletes. And so the mission of our WCS athletic program is to vigorously pursue athletic excellence in order to positively embrace uphold and advance the culture of Wilmington Christian School to, ve to develop lifelong leaders of Christian character and to glorify God. So coach, this is something that we have been talking about doing for a year. Here we are, episode one. How does it feel? Man, it feels really great to be here. Uh, we talk often about pushing athletics forward in our pursuit of excellence. Uh, this feels like a giant step for us. This is a huge step in as you and I have talked about, really two things that we're trying to accomplish here. Um, one, provide a forum to go deeper into some of the key components of our athletic culture, what it means to play here at WCS and to, to wear the WCS uniform. We really want to unpack um, how to have a great culture, how to help people grow in their faith, and how to pursue God uh, through sport. And that keeps us connected to the mission of our school. Uh, and the second thing is to keep everyone updated with critical information and announcements, which we'll always do at the end of the podcast. So stay tuned to the end today. We're going to talk about homecoming and all the details that are coming up for uh, for HOCO, and we'll do that every every episode at the end. And and also we know this is just a great opportunity to reach everyone in our school community. We've got pre-K to 12th grade here. Um, we've got parents, students, teachers, faculty, alumni, um, and this will just be a way that we can reach everybody um, and, and do it on a, hopefully a, a weekly basis. So uh, we had talked about in chapel uh, last Friday. We had some of our captains up on stage. You and I were on stage. And we really talked about two things. Number one, are athletics biblical? And we know that they are. We wouldn't be doing them if we weren't. But First Timothy 4 says physical training is of some value, but train yourself for godliness, so we, we know training is okay. Um, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're told to take care of our bodies. But when you really bring that together, the physical training and the training for godliness, we know that sports can be used um, for all the right reasons. And then really what it comes down to then is how we play. And so for us here, we have our athlete code of conduct. It's 16 verses. We call it the code. 16 verses that really um, exemplify what our athletes should look like when they're playing and competing and we've really distilled that down to four key phrases that we're going to talk about. Number one, showing our faith through our play. Two, preparing with tenacity. Three, competing with uncommon toughness. And four, uniting as a family. So let's just dig into these quickly one at a time. First, showing our faith through our play. Um, we know that we pray before practice, after practice. We pray with other teams. That's always a great uh, ministry, but what comes to your mind when, when we talk about showing our faith through our play? Yeah, when I think about showing our faith through our play, I really think about how are we visibly different from other athletes. Um, we're called to be lights unto a dark world, uh, and I really, really come back to, to praying after games or for our cross-country teams. They, they do their run outs before their meets where they run about 20, 30 yards out before the start, uh, and they pray together as a huddle so those athletes see them praying. Uh, after the game, home and away, uh, private school, public school, doesn't matter who we're playing or where we're playing, um, we always offer to the other team to join us at the circle, at the center field, uh, and, and pray with us at the end of games. Um, and, and you can elaborate a little bit on some special circumstances where, where we've been the next game after some, some tragedy in some people's lives and some schools' lives uh, where that's really hit home for them. Yeah, it seems like every year there's a situation that comes up where it's just God working that we're the next game for a team. A couple years ago um, in middle school basketball, we were playing a school who unfortunately had a young man pass away over Christmas break. And 
came back from Christmas break, it, the season picked up again, and we were their first game. And just talking with their athletic director, he was really, really happy that it was us that was going there. They had the entire school, um, teachers, faculty, everybody was there. And it was the first time that the family had come back to the school. And so we were able to pray in that gym over the entire situation, pray for the family, pray for the students. And um, it, it was a great moment. And I, it was awesome that we were the ones that, that got to be there. And it's just great how it worked out. That's really cool. For that, it was, and, and there's other stories. Um, it, it happens every year. Um, and what I really find interesting is that when we ask a team to, to pray and only one or two athletes come forward, just the really the courage yeah. of those um, athletes to come forward, really break away from the rest of their teams and pray, it's awesome. And that, that happens every year. Yeah. So second thing, prepare with tenacity. So one of the things, when we, when we came up with these four phrases, it was really six years ago, we were talking to our athletes at the time about really what does it mean to play here? What are the things we're doing well? What are the things we're not doing well? And um, one of the things that came up was we need to, we need to practice harder. We need to prepare better. Um, and 90% of the time we spend with teams is, is practice. Um, so talk to us about how we're doing there, what you think of. I know you're a big film guy. You watch a lot of film. You want to always be prepared. Uh, talk about how we're preparing for our games. Yeah, I think this is something we've gotten immensely better at over the years. Um, in our athletic department as a whole. Uh, it's truly being prepared for whatever you're going into. Um, competition, uh, you know, battle, if you will. Um, <clears throat> it's, the, it's the lesson of reaping and sowing, mm -hmm. or sowing what you reap. Um, and, and I think a lot of our athletes have shown the desire to want to practice harder. And for the coaches listening and myself, you know, we should answer that call. Uh, and film is a great way to prepare for something that you're going into. Um, I hate being unprepared. I hate that feeling. I don't like going into something I'm not aware of. And when we have that opportunity through through huddle, uh, which we get for all of our teams to um, uh, really see other teams play and ourselves play, uh, and, and we can prepare very well with that tool. Yeah, and we've got the huddle camera outside now. We're filming our games outside. We have it inside. And just besides just us watching our, our own games, yep. huddle will go in, look at all of the – um, really film across our state and pick out highlights. Shout out to Maria Coco Lambie last week um, was one of the five best kills across the state of Delaware in volleyball. I think she was number two. Yeah. Um, but it's just besides just watching ourselves, huddle's a great way to get exposure for our athletes. Yeah. It's really cool. Okay, number three, competing with uncommon toughness. And so I like to say there really should never be any team that plays harder than us. Um, Greater love has no man than this. Then he lay down his life for his friends. We have a savior who was willing to die for us. So really, there is no reason that we shouldn't be the hardest playing team every time that we're out there. But talk about our, our competition and how we compete with toughness. Yeah, I mean, we, we all play for a higher purpose. We play to glorify God. And there's actually a little bit of an athletic and competitive advantage within that um, where we have the ability to play for something more than, than just ourselves. I mean, that should push us to want to play as hard as we can. Uh, we never want to cut God short of the glory that he's due. Um, and, and we can do that by playing to our, our hardest capability at all times. Yep, agreed. And the fourth one, unite his family. So when we did this, again, a number of years ago, what the athletes said is they want to be able to watch each other play. They want to support each other um, in the way, you know, watching games, being at games. Um, last weekend, a couple Saturday nights ago, uh, Cross Country had a meet at um, St. Mark's, um, the Moonlight Run. And we had an amazing student section yeah, at the Cross Country meet, like, the best cheer in WCS. It was, it was awesome. Um, and that was really cool to see our student body go out and support cross country. But um, I, I, we're really getting good at supporting all of the sports here. So when we talk about uniting his family, what, what do you think of? Yeah. And back to that cross country meet, you know, uh, from what the athletes said afterwards, like they got a massive boost from our students and um, parents and, you know, faculty that were there to support them. They ran better. Uh, and it showed as our girls came second in the varsity meet um, at that at that meet. Uh, for us, 
for athletics at WCS, um, paramount for our school culture, our spirit, and our sense of belonging. Uh, having something that you belong to, right, that's bigger than just yourself is, is important for us. Um, it enhances the athletic experience. And the more that we unite as a family, the better that we will become at that. Uh, I'm very excited to see how our students unite this coming weekend for our homecoming games. Yeah, homecoming is huge. Let's transition into that and the announcements. And I, this is my sixth year here. Um, as the athletic director, and I can tell you the most fun that I've had has been at the homecoming, yeah. uh, particularly the homecoming volleyball games. Our student section, I, I think, is as good as anyone in the state. The stuff that we do on homecoming volleyball night is amazing. And so, uh, you know, Warrior Nation, we're looking for you to come out this uh, Friday night. We, everybody's got games this week, Monday through Thursday, so let's take care of what we need to when, with the games during the week. But let's talk about homecoming specifically when we get to Friday, Saturday. So, um, there is going to be Spirit Week. Well, first, let me say, if you don't have a homecoming date and you don't have a ticket, uh, hurry up. Tickets are 10 bucks. The dance is Saturday night. Um, but we have Spirit really dress down days in Spirit Week each day of the week. So Monday um, is Flannel Day for the high school only. Tuesday, October 1st, is an all-school dress down day for $2. Wednesday, the 2nd, is the Luau dress-up theme for high school only. On Thursday, October 3rd, we'll have our pep rally, which is always a great time to practice the stuff we're going to do uh, Friday night at the game. So pep rally Thursday, and that's warrior wear theme um, uh, for Thursday. Friday, homecoming t-shirt day. So um, it, our, the t-shirts are in blackout this year, so we're, everything's going to be black. The t-shirts are black. They'll be sale for, uh, on sale for $15. We're going to sell them before school in the lobby. We'll sell them at lunch. Um, but on Friday, wear your homecoming T-shirt, wear it to the game. Um, it's it's going to be awesome. One thing I just want to say about Friday, though, um, our 7th and 8th graders are going to be on field trips Thursday and Friday, and that's like 60 rowdy middle schoolers that we need at the game Friday night and Saturday. So 7th and 8th graders and parents, um, you'll be back from your trips in time. Go home, take a nap. Whatever you need to do, come back. But we need to pack this place, and, and the middle schoolers are a huge part. Yeah, we need them. We do. We got to have the seventh and eighth graders here. Um, sixth graders, it's mandatory. We'll see you there. Um, let's talk about just the other the schedule for the rest of um, what's going on. So, October fourth is is Friday. So, food trucks from four to seven p.m. JV volleyballs at four fifteen. Everybody come out and support JV volleyball. Um, get some food. Varsity volleyball will be at 5.30 p.m., and then there's a bonfire after the varsity volleyball game ends. That'll be out in the parking lot. Um, so that's Friday, Saturday morning um, for the guys and the young men. There's a WCS prayer gathering that'll be in the lobby um, at 9 a.m. on Saturday. There'll be food trucks on Saturday from 11 to 2. Uh, there'll be other activities, I think face painting, balloons, those types of things. And then at 11 a.m., varsity soccer and at 1 p.m. varsity field hockey, and then the dance is at 7 o'clock Saturday night. So I think those are the major um, updates. We play Sanford. Yeah, we do. This turned into a pretty good rivalry, and then in a couple weeks um, we're at their place for their homecoming. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be pretty, pretty good. awesome. So, guys, student section, Warrior Nation, we need you Friday night. We need you Saturday. Blackout. Everybody, um, everybody show up. It's going to be a blast. It's yeah. going to be a blast. So there we go. I think that's episode one, Coach. Any final thoughts? Yeah, I'm really excited for this homecoming. Uh, we obviously have a big week to get through. It's going to be a great week. Uh, we have we've never played three homecoming homecoming games on right. the uh, facilities that we have. Right, we've never had a homecoming game on alumni field yet. So it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, really looking forward to it. It's always a great day to be a warrior. It's a great day to be a warrior. Big shout out to Ben Cornell. He's our audio, our visual, our picture guy. He's doing everything behind the scenes to make this work. So Ben, we, we appreciate everything you're doing. Check us out on Instagram, WCS Warrior Way Podcast. We'll be posting updates there. And every time we have an episode, that's um, how you'll find out. So episode one, check. Warrior Pride, Sir. out. Hey, check, check, check. Yeah, whoa, whoa. If there's one thing I know, no, 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 hey, yeah, God is good. All the time, if he ain't...